Welcome to the It Just Podcast. Welcome, uh, It Gents readers, or should I say listeners now, uh, to the very first It Gents podcast. My name is Dana Jones, and I'm an editor with the website. And today for this episode, uh, doing some recap of the UK Tech Fest, I'm joined by Pete Overall and Josh Redmond. How are you guys doing? Hello. Good, thank you. Yeah, not too bad, thanks. Yeah, now what a weekend that was. Uh, you guys are are somewhat new to the website, I would say. You're some of our, our newer writers, and this was kind of your your first gig, more or less, with the website. How was the weekend for you guys? Just you know. Um, yeah, it was it was really cool. Like it was the first music anything I've covered as part of Agents, so it was kind of a baptism in fire. But it was, you know, I learned a lot, and it was pretty fun. So can't complain. I mean, yeah, for me, it was uh, my fifth time at the festival and uh, I'd done the uh, TechFest preview just beforehand. And uh, for me, it was just brilliant being there, getting backstage, getting to meet more of the artists, more of the fans. It was just an overall great experience. Now, Pete, you said that you've been to all the other previous TechFests before this. How did this one compare uh, to some of the the other years? I've got to admit, this one is definitely... Oh, it, it was up there. It's uh, hard to choose between uh, year three and this year, I must admit, just because of the uh, reunion gig of sixth and uh, the whole of that last Sunday on that uh, tech fest. But this year, the bands were absolutely solid. The stage, well, the stages felt so much more evolved than they have been. The sound was absolutely on point. And uh, I f- even the lighting, like that had been revamped this year, and that was absolutely spectacular. So as an overall piece, I've got to say this year might just nip it. Now, of course, for those listening who might not know exactly what it is that we're talking about, uh, the United Kingdom Tech Metal Fest uh, just celebrated its fifth anniversary. It took place over a weekend in August, and uh, it, it was ac- absolutely an incredible experience. I think there was, what, 50 plus bands playing you know in the same area over four days. Uh, for, for me personally, I haven't, hadn't seen anything like it or been to anything like it before. Yeah, it's a pretty unique sort of uh, festival. Like, even like of all the kind of festivals in the UK, it's one of the most. It's quite niche, and it's got really like awesome like little community around it that like is really gives it like good vibes compared to even like Bloodstock or Sonosphere or anything. Yeah, building on that, I mean, like everything from uh, the top down to security is all fans. It's it's not run by people on their day job. It's everybody is here for the music, for the experience, and that's what really makes Tech Fest a unique and uh, exciting tech festival, I must say. Yeah, to me, it really felt it was like it was like a community. Uh, Pete, I think you definitely hit the nail on the head there. Everyone there wants to be there, is loving being there. Everyone from the fans to the bands to the security. Um, and what a part I really loved was can't just camping out for the weekend. It was great. I mean, like from where I was camping, I could look over and I could see some of the other bands also just camping out. I mean, it, it's like there's there's no, um, you know, maybe it's good and it's bad depending on on who you are, but there's like no divide between the fans and the bands. And and like I said, it, it really kind of added to that feeling that you know this is a community. Yeah, absolutely. It breaks down barriers. It makes people feel more included with the music and the festival. Whereas when you go to something like Download or like uh, Josh said, Sonosphere and stuff like other festivals like that, you get this massive d- d- divide between like the fans and the musicians. They never get into a crowd. And if they do, then it's like a very one- like once in a lifetime opportunity, really, to meet that person. Whereas a tech festival, drunk at 1 a.m. in the morning you decide to go for a walk and you'll bump into like the guitarists of a band drummers of a band and it's just great you can hang out and just have a great time with them yeah no, absolutely like uh, i remember uh who's a uh, harrison white i believe of uh, novena was organizing like acoustic jams in the camp and uh c2i was just kind of like wandering around you kind of like really get up close with all the people who are playing it and it was kind of like as you said one big community of you know experience yeah, so I think overall, just like a blanket sort of wrapping up the weekend, it was amazing. It was an incredible experience for me, and yeah, I, I, I can't wait to go back. So uh, obviously, of course, huge shout out to Simon Garrett and uh, everyone else on the production team for putting together such like such an incredible festival. It was really an amazing time. Yeah, absolutely. Re- really hit the nail on the head there again. It's just 
he, he's done this from scratch and he, every year he's built on it and um, I think this year he's really shown like how big this festival can get by the uh, headliners he pulled in and the uh, structure which he put in place this year it was just absolutely brilliant yeah it was my, my first tech fest but literally unlike anything else it was probably one of the best music festivals on every level that like you can possibly conceptualize <laughs> All right, so now let's get down to the nitty-gritty of the weekend. So it was four days long. It was Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And each day had their own headliner uh, on two separate stages, so technically two headliners per day, as well as uh, after parties and workshops throughout the day. Now let's let's start with Thursday. We were all there for Thursday. We were all there for that. I think Indeed. they called it the, the early bird special. Mm. Yeah, no, so drove we, up my mates at um, about... 10 in the morning or so got to peterborough probably say just before the first band started yeah i got there around that same time too uh i think it was a really nice way just to kind of you know get get used to what the weekend was going to be like the schedule wasn't too hectic for for too many bands there was only one stage going um but uh i think personally the highlight for me uh was uh the uh the headliner napoleon uh earlier that day i actually got to interview uh, the guitarist Sam. Uh, so look forward to that interview going up on the website sometime soon, listeners. Uh, but yeah, Napoleon was was really great because they had just recently put out put out their album and it's been getting a lot of really good critical, you know, you know, feedback and it was really really cool to to see them live. Yeah, like I like Napoleon. I wasn't that blown away by them, but they were like a pretty cool sort of. Uh, they got a lot of, like melody and stuff in the music, which is always nice when you've got a lot of sort of like chugging going on at the weekend. Um, but yeah, no, Thursday as a whole, I missed about the first half of it, but it was pretty solid, especially given it was just like the kind of early bird extra day. Yeah, I must agree. I really enjoyed Napoleon for the most part. Um, at times, I was getting a bit, it, it felt like it was blending a bit for me. However, I thought the energy they put into their set was fantastic. Um, also, that day, I'd probably have to get a shout out to Accord. I mean, um, these guys, I'd heard them, I think, once before like before i got to a festival and uh they really reminded me of a band who played last year called suma really chuggy like uh almost a bluesy sound to them but definitely drawing on a lot of bands like carnival tesseract and they were just really all ground great experience bass players uh vocals are absolutely on point as well um i also caught visions and uh, i must admit i haven't paid a lot of attention to them until um, their latest album and uh, if anybody of you guys haven't checked it out yet it's absolutely fantastic so i really would recommend that again a lot of energy a lot of um like pretty positive sounding album it's quite a nice and uh, summary sort of album to get along to yeah and uh, also on thursday there were a couple of master classes some workshops i don't know if you guys managed to catch any but i uh i got to check out the pr workshop that was put on by steph knight at domino pr as well as the c2i put on a guitar master class which was really cool to uh to see as well i must admit my musical talents don't really range that far so uh <laughs> did miss that <laughs> bit out <laughs> you know I, I caught one of the master classes on um i think friday saturday i believe but uh, nothing on Thursday, I'm afraid. Were, uh, were there any bands that uh, stuck out to you, Josh, from Thursday? On Thursday? Uh, I must admit, I, I only got there to see Visions and Napoleon. But um, I remember Visions, I, they were pretty cool. I, I didn't really know, expect anything, so like, maybe that's why. But I remember really enjoying them. They had like good amount of energy. And the crowd was, I think, surprisingly into it, uh, given how like early they were on the bill on Thursday. So, yeah, check them out. All right, so that was Thursday. Pretty good first day. Uh, I I didn't really know what to expect after that because the day was already so incredible. Seeing seeing so many bands going to CTY's masterclass. I mean, what else can the you know the festival hold? And man, it each day just like upped up the game. <laughs> uh, Friday was was amazing as well. Uh, so on Friday they opened up the second stage. So you'd have uh, the it was the Carillion guitar stage and uh, hands on printing stage, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, th I mean, you guys can can speak to this as well, but I think it was like there was bare afternoon, there was barely any time that was not filled with a band playing. Yeah, on one of those that's stages. pretty much it. Yeah, there was yeah, about yeah. five minute gap between uh, bands. Yeah, it was set pretty well at the alternating stages. Like there, you were never sitting around waiting for something to happen. There was always music playing, like almost every minute of the day. And that and that totally blew my mind too. I mean, you'd walk from one 
you know, show and cross the hangar to the next and go catch another band. And you would just do that all day. Yeah. Uh, but, but Friday was pretty busy for us as well. Uh, of course, we were there for it. Jen's doing some press work and yeah, uh, we started to ha- get some interviews lined up. Uh, and that, I know, at least for me, that, that took up some of my day. Uh, but uh, Pete, how was Friday for you? Yeah, I, I managed to get a few interviews in. So uh, I sat down with uh, Pliny. Mm-hmm. Um, I must admit, I did miss a No Sins uh, Vader's Gaze one due to a timing error, but I made up for it the next day. Um, but band-wise, I caught quite a few. Um, I managed to see Zephyr, so big shout-out to the boys in Zephyr. Um, really, really uh, good set, like quite new on the scene. Um, they got a song out, I believe it's called The Precipice. I've probably like, messed that up a little bit. Um, but, yeah, really, really good um, sort of... Uh, God, I'm trying to think of bands like them, but um, sort of While She Sleeps, I'm not sure if you guys heard of them. Um, so yeah, really, really good positive vibes from them. Um, so, oh no, I miss Novena. Now, that's a band which I'm quite gutted about missing. I believe that you caught a little bit of them down at, at the v- very end of their set. So I wonder if you want to like have a go and chat about them for a sec. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I really was only able to catch five minutes maybe of their sex i also had to go run off and do some interviews uh so i was also kind of upset that i missed them as well from what i heard i think their set was just one song just (laughs) one song like one of those sort of prog bands you know the very very Mm -hmm. long uh very Mm -hmm. long epic songs and that's totally up my alley that's the kind of thing i love uh so when you have this super proggy technical music and then you have ross from hagen singing vocals over it I was so mad that I, I only was able to catch five minutes. <laughs> I wish I could have stuck around for the entire thing. Yeah, that's pretty much what all my friends concluded to me. And I'm, I'm yeah, really good. I miss them, actually. Yeah, I, I, I didn't check them out because I didn't really, I'd never heard of them. And I didn't really know what they're about. And I thought, oh, I'll just, you know, not I'll see some other bands. But I really regret that now because everyone's been raising how great they are constantly since, um, uh, um, since they're set. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I guess you could say uh, Novena might be one of like the biggest surprises of TechFest. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. There's, there's plenty of surprises as well on the bill, but um, I think they're definitely the ones to catch out. I believe they're playing a, um, a gig with Fractions coming up. Um, I mate Joel Pinder's in the band Fractions there. So uh, that's coming up in London, I think, next few weeks. All right, so those of you in London, we'd highly recommend you check out Novena. Check them out. Yeah, maybe see you there. <laughs> All right, now, uh, Josh, how was Friday for you? Uh, Friday, I, to be honest with you, most of the bands on Friday, I didn't really know that well. So, like, um, I checked out Zephyr, and I checked out Die Thunder and Concept and stuff. And I was really pleasantly surprised both times. I only checked out Zephyr because I saw Peter post on Facebook um, about how great they were, and I thought I'd, you know, go down and see what they're about. But they were really, honestly, one of the highlights of the weekend for me. They were so, so good. Like energetic, lots of um, cool, like keyboard marimbery sounding stuff. Like really awesome, like uh, metalcore band. And um, also, Dali Thunder Concept were really, really good. Like lots of you know melody guitar, really heavy vocals. Uh, they were probably the highlights of Friday for me. Um, of course, as well, obviously, plenty in intervals also like kicked ass. Um, but yeah, no, Friday was probably the most unexpected day for me. But also yeah, gotta, pretty good. gotta say, Dali Thunder and Concept, fantastic as well. Uh, big mm. shout out to Martin and the other boys in the band. Um, but yeah, but it's it's great to see them play their uh, first EP again. Um, that that re-recorded version's fantastic mix, sounds really quality. So uh, definitely good to see them back at Tech Fest. Hopefully, we'll see them again on the road soon. Um, did you guys catch um, Harbinger at all? Yes, actually. Um... Uh, I only caught them because the I think it was the bassist was camping near us and told us all uh, told my friends who were camping to come see them. We thought, oh, why not? And they were pretty cool, actually. They were, um, oh, they kind of like thrashy metalcore, was it? Yeah, sort of pretty riftacular. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's nice hearing a bit of riff when you because a lot of kind of bands out of Texas sometimes can have a or gent bands I think have a tendency to just you know chug zip you chug in the open string you know zeros and ones yeah. And so yeah, having yeah. some actual riffs to push the music forward is always nice. Definitely, yeah. Now Harbinger, they were on on Saturday, I think, right? No, I think they were Friday. 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 Dun, dun. Oh no, that's okay. very true. No, you got that right. Oh. They got moved to Saturday. Oh, oh yeah. So they oh, did. Okay. <laughs> yeah, good call there. Good call. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
I, I, all I remember is that that Friday was, was pretty stressful for me. Um, those of you listening, you can probably tell that I have a bit of a different accent from the two gentlemen with me on this podcast. Uh, it's because I'm Canadian and, uh, Tech Fest was part of a, a Europe trip that I was doing. Um, and of course, silly me, the Canadian I was traveling with only a backpack. I was super unprepared for, uh, for Tech Fest. So just before I got there, I bought a little pop up tent to enjoy. Uh, but it did not really stand up against, uh, those, uh, legendary British rains. And, uh, so that first night, that Thursday night, my phone got totally soaked. And that's what I had been using to record interviews. So I woke up that Friday morning knowing that I had to go interview David Maxim Michich from Destiny Potato and, of course, his solo stuff, uh, interview Aaron Marshall of Intervals and C2I with a phone that didn't work. Uh, so I spent most of that morning running around like a chicken with his head cut off trying to figure out what to do. I managed to get a box of rice, put the phone in the rice and let it sit for a bit. But, Pete, luckily, you had that voice recorder with you, and I think you really saved my ass that yeah, day. Yeah, that was a bit of a fluke as well. My brother only gave it to me a few days beforehand. <laughs> Uh, I'm so so lucky that you had it. It pulled free. Uh, so yeah, w- once I finally got that sorted out, thanks to Pete, I was I was able to do those interviews. Um, so unfortunately, I didn't catch too much on that Friday, but uh, of course, I caught disperse. Disperse were incredible. Jakob Zaiteki, I think, is one of the most expressive guitar players out there. In like. I don't want to say the industry or the genre, but just just in general, he 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 was amazing to see live. Did you guys catch the Spurs? I didn't. I must admit, I checked him out um, most because I I I, I like um, I'm quite a fan of uh, Mike uh, Malian, who used to be a drummer for Monuments. Um, yeah, the Spurs were really really cool. Uh, they they were kind of more traditional prog, I think, um, than like a lot of the other kind of janty bands. But that was a nice sort of change of pace from the uh, um, the music I was on that day. Yeah, they're that kind of thing. That music is right at my wheelhouse, mm. uh, and it was a surprise to me. I, di- I didn't know that Mike was drumming for uh, drumming for them, so that was a nice surprise. Uh, but yeah, definitely, Disperse was a highlight for me of that of that Friday. Plintervals, as always, I was lucky enough to catch them here in Canada in Toronto at a, a hometown show for Aaron Marshall, and that and that was really incredible. Uh, so it was also awesome to see them here as well. Uh, but now the first or the disperse was the headliner on the hands on printing stage, but the big headliner for that Friday night was animals as leaders. And I think now we're going to be heading to a little bit of a controversial opinion territory. <laughs> Pete, what do you, uh, what have you got for us? So, um, I've seen animals a few times. Um, God, what this is uh fourth time round, I believe. Um, I've seen them on each of her album tours and then this time just to top up um, the last one, Joy Motion. And uh, I've got to admit, this was probably the poorest performance I've seen from them. Um, Now, I'm led to believe um, from my PR sources (laughs) that um, (laughs) Tosin was a bit jet-lagged, unfortunately. I guess they must have had quite a sharp schedule getting across from the States, um, which is a bit of a shame considering it's the first, like... uh, day of the tour but um i guess he must have had something on in america so can't fault them for that but um yeah Tosa was a bit jet lagged and it really showed in his performance it was um that you could see him and even javier is like missing a few beats um and i know a few of my friends um people i've spoken to said it sort of detracted a bit from the performance but overall i mean they're such a solid tight band that you can't really fault them and the speed that they play at i mean i, I can barely function after jet lag so um fair play for even being able to put on a show so um yeah ha- hats off to them um even though i thought it was definitely um the least impressive i've seen them yet so um i've got to say set list was um really on point again um got a lot of uh, the old favorites obviously finishing on cafe which you can't go wrong with whatsoever um a lot of joy emotion a lot of the uh bouncier tunes coming in like really highlighting the summer and also the appeal of a whole tour like you you don't really want to be following up uh plenies and intervals is something like crunchingly heavy you want to keep that like flow going and i think annals have nailed it in their set list and if you're catching them on this upcoming tour then i'm sure you're gonna have a fucking great time uh yeah i think i, I definitely agree with you there pete i uh, this was also my fourth time i think seeing them uh and it was 
you know, I think of all the other times I've seen them, this was kind of like at the bottom, bottom rung. But that's not to say it was terrible. I mean, a bad animals as leaders, a less than stellar animals as leader show is still by far better than God, almost anything else out there because you know, it's, it's animals as leaders. They're, they're amazing. Mm. Um, but, but yeah, it was, it, it was kind of noticeable. There were some beats missed, you know, some, uh, some notes not quite played at the right time or the, the right way. And, and it, I find it did detract a little bit from the performance, but overall, I mean, still animals as leaders, right? So absolutely. Yeah. You can't, you can't be upset with watching those guys. It's uh, just magical watching those guys play. You know, it's like, Whenever I, when I, I, as a musician, like whenever I see a band like that, it's just like that they finish. It's like, oh, I need to go home and practice for like you know another six years, <laughs> like without <trying laughs> taking any breaks. You know, like you need kind of pe- people who are that good to kind of uh, inspire you a lot of the times. So it's always really impressive seeing bands like that. So that was more or less Friday, but of course we can't move on to Saturday yet without talking about what I think was was my personal highlight of the entire day, other than watching Disperse, the Super Jam. The Super Jam at the Friday night. Uh, someone set up a couple instruments in uh, the sort of hangar where they were doing master classes and workshops and stuff. And more or less, just all these amazing musicians from from all their different bands came out and they all jammed together. Mike Malian was there. Uh, Jakob Zytecki, he was there, but I don't think he played. Aaron Marshall, Tosin Abasi, Pliny. It was incredible. I have never seen anything like it before. Yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome. Um, like they started it up. Um, David uh, Maxim McKeek actually started it in the second year, and um, I mean that one on its own was uh, pretty incredible. It's more of a slow pace, like smooth sort of jam. And then the uh, next year at the third one, that's when I remember it really kicking off and like um, the standard really being set for it. Absolutely fantastic time. Um, really really good musicians playing and then this time was just yeah it it was special it was amazing seeing all those uh, guitarists those band members playing together hearing some incredible like keyboard solos even as well and and on that note it was uh the keyboard player from that band for the oracle they played on the saturday their their keyboard player was also there but also doing some saxophone stuff as too if i remember correctly from that night yeah, absolutely. I think he came on right towards the very end and just started like laying down some sacks. I, I think I missed the very start of it, but I'm not too sure how long I did miss uh, to begin with. But yeah, absolutely brilliant. Um, I must admit, I, my memory is a bit foggy of it. <laughs> well, I think uh, most of us suffer from a little bit of a fo- foggy memory towards the, uh, the end of those days. Um, but yeah, it was great. Uh, I mean, C2I kind of challenged Pliny to a little, like, you know, solo off. Aaron Marshall jumped, uh, on the drums against, I think it was against Matt Gardska or against Mike Malian. It was, it was really cool. Uh, it was super, I felt like privileged to be there watching these guys just all jam out together. Yeah. Yeah. I actually, uh, I missed it and I'm like seriously regretting that now because, uh, everyone's been raving about how great it was the entire time. So. <laughs> FOMO, you ne- you never miss that super jam. Never yeah. miss the super jam. <laughs> next year. Terrible choice. <laughs> All right, so next up, Saturday. Saturday was also a very big day with bands. Uh who were the highlights for you guys? Josh? Oh, without a doubt, Fit for an Autopsy and Fallujah were absolutely amazing. Like, um I was kind of in some in, I was in dire need of some, you know, like seriously heavy kind of uh some death metal and stuff to kind of tie me over through through all the prog. And they seriously delivered both those both those bands. Like for an autopsy were the, um I I've been following them quite a lot anyway, and they're they're uh, I I was lucky to interview them but uh, early in the day actually, which was really cool. Um that should be going up soon as well, along with the other interviews from the festival. Um but no, they were really, really solid, and I think they put some like interesting spins on their um, uh, um, newest album and some of their oldest material as well. And they played when they played it live, which is always nice. It's a bit more interesting than just playing it as it was written on the uh, um, album. And Fallujah are just like awesome. I don't really know what to say about them, just because they're so unique and interesting and such a cool band that it's kind of hard to describe them. But like, it's just the awesome sort of like soaring melodies all the synth and everything and the kind of really 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 heavy yeah. uh drums and breakdowns and guitars and then everything like really awesome 
<laughs> Sorry. Yeah, because uh, yeah. jo- Josh and I were uh, lucky enough to interview Fallujah, and that, yeah, but it was just brilliant. Like they they played just such a as he said atmospheric like engulfing set and the sound was again just so on point from that main stage it was just absolutely brilliant and um the the new material from um is it an endless void that just sounded fucking amazing um really really great from the band members like have uh, to be fair that sort of time of day as well that stage is so hot that um playing up there must be an absolute chore so um yeah really really rated their set yeah, no. Um, yeah, the sound on the main stage was pretty impressive. I remember I was in the uh, the, the photo pit for most for um, quite a lot of the bands, and I think it was on a uh, on the Friday. I can't remember. I think it was Colin Frage who was the first band I pho- uh, pho- photographed um, at the main stage, and just the like the bass from the subwoofers was enough to kind of you know make everything my the keys in my pocket like jangle around and like shake my bones basically. So and you you could hear outside the um. Uh, um when you're outside the hangar, you could hear the actual like, metal like construction hangar like kind of shaking around every time there's a bassier section in the song. Ridiculous. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also managed to uh, catch out Atlantis Chronicles. Um, I think I managed to listen to their album like once through beforehand and thought, yeah, I've got to ki- give these uh, guys a shot. But again, like following on from the vein of uh, Fit for an Autopsy and uh, Fallujah, some really good tech metal. Uh, sorry, tech death. Um, a lot of sweeping guitars and uh, r- really heavily conceptualized albums, which uh, make listening to them a great, uh, like, uh, great time. And uh, when you actually check them out live, monstrous sounds, bass players, really great. The uh, the uh, the mixing they do live is brilliant on its own, and the vocalist just has a hell of a lot of energy. So um, they're a definitely a ten out of ten band for me at the weekend. Did you guys manage to catch for the Oracle? I mentioned them previously before. They were the first band on the second stage, I believe, on Saturday. Did you guys get, uh, manage to check them? Oh, I didn't. I sure. didn't, unfortunately. I was, I was out shopping at that point. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Well, I managed to catch them, and they were incredibly impressive. Uh, I don't know if it's just because maybe I'm, I'm getting old, but they, they looked super, super young to me. These are, they seem like very young guys up there on that stage. And I was, I was very impressed. Uh, they had a little bit of technical difficulties before the set started, but they managed to continue <laughs> on and they put, they put on one hell of a set. Color, color me impressed. I shout out to For the Oracle. You guys put on a fantastic set. Really good stuff. Uh, but I think my other big Saturday ones, uh, C2I. I'm a huge fan of C2I and it was really cool. To um to meet him that weekend and get to interview him and just kind of hang out, uh, yeah. So getting to hear that music live was great because of course C two is is in that uh once again I don't want to use the word genre but it's like that group of of a lot of musicians who kind of do this stuff from their bedrooms right they record hmm. they produce they do everything on their own um so it was really cool to hear that music live you don't really expect to to do you know to to go see that kind of music. Um, and to hear it with live drums as, as well for me, uh, for a lot of the stuff is, is programmed, but hearing like off yeah. of uh, set course for Andromeda, um, the darkness within hearing that with, with real heavy drums, I think my neck almost fell off cause I was headbanging so hard. It was, it was amazing. Stellar, stellar, stellar set. Yeah. It, interstellar. You got to say for his uh, new album, that was just an absolute piece of like, a fantastic piece of work released earlier this year and it, it comes across so well live um he's really done a great job i mean the whole band have done a great job in uh, translating that from uh, album to the live performance yeah sometimes it can be really challenging to get like really sort of um, uh, like virtuosic uh technical instrumental music to kind of work well live um but i think Sithy really pulled it off like that was a pretty awesome set yeah he was he was great i think he definitely deserved to be the headliner uh of uh, of that stage um so trying to think who else do i see that day i also saw destiny potato that was incredible most of the bands we're going to be shouting out here and you know talking about that i was so excited to see are more or less those european bands that who knows when they'd come to north america so for me this was like a huge thing to see all of these bands in one place i understand for some of you european folk this might be a regular occurrence uh but to get so many amazing bands musicians in one one place like this it, it blew my mind so destiny potato was another one uh came all the way from serbia super cool to see them live it was amazing and they also premiered two new songs from their upcoming album and uh, they were great did, did you guys manage to catch destiny potato 
Yeah, um, they were they were pretty cool. Like, um, they were quite a, an interesting and unique sounding band. They got really good like guitar like groove and stuff in them. And I yeah, and I remember there's been some drama over them coming to Tech Fest for a few years now because they've been having issues with their visas, I believe. But no, it was good to finally like kind of see them in the UK. Like they were definitely uh, they definitely put on a good show. Pete, did you manage to catch Dusty Potato? Oh, so, sorry. I was I was gonna say yeah. No, I didn't. I didn't see them. No, uh, not my fair cup enough. Of tea. Fair enough. Uh, and that brings me to the Saturday headliner, my fellow Canucks, protest the hero. Um, honestly, that was that was another highlight of the weekend for me. And I know I just kind of went on that thing about saying, "Oh, European band, so great to see them." Uh, <laughs> it was it was kind of really great to see Protest the Hero <laughs> there as well. Uh, I mean, I I I've seen them a couple times here in Canada as well, and it's always a wild and crazy time. Uh, so I was right up there. I was right at the front. You guys <laughs> saw me. I was wearing that uh, Canadian Canadian flag tee, and I had my <laughs> had my hat that had my hometown on it, and I chucked it to roadie walker and he read it out on stage and that was great that was that was definitely a highlight of the weekend for me when uh <laughs> when good mm. he's always got a great way of playing the crowd as well he's fantastic roadie is oh, a yeah. front man so de- definite highlight of having roadie walker read out blind river ontario uh to a crowd of i don't know 300 400 people in M- more Newark. than that oh more than that more than that, more than right. that. <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah it's, 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 <laughs> over, I, I think it's got to be over a thousand at least in that Must, stage. I think so, yeah. Like, or yeah, and it was mostly full. So capacity like was, uh, I think it was over two thousand this year easily. So wow, I didn't, I didn't think that many people had had gone, but I guess maybe I really am bad at counting. A lot of people to yeah. count, to be fair. It's quite <laughs> yeah, true, true. <laughs> Yeah. How, 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 how to aggregate? How but, to aggregate. Uh, yeah, protest the hero. <laughs> protest hero was was amazing. They were stellar, as always. All right, yeah, I was just gonna say the uh, the proposal on stage as well was kind of like a really cool moment. Um, yeah, cool. Yeah, that, that was. Oh right, that, that too. Was such, like a like a cool thing for the band to do for for the fans like, for their fan and everything. It's just like really awesome. Like kind of it kind of summed up the sort of sense of community between the bands and the fans at Tech Fest that we were talking about earlier. Um, I thought it was just oh my god, yeah. of course, and and that was her, her her name was Helen or or Heather. She was she's one of the people behind organizing the the festival as well. So that that was kind of huge. Yeah, massive moment. It's uh, really cool of the band to drop that down for them. Like really great, and uh, yeah, let's just said it. Just um, it really sums up how the community works and uh, how everybody just looks out for each other. Definitely, yeah, yeah. Saturday. Was- Saturday was great. Headlined by those good old Canadian boys, protest the hero. Yeah, I've got to say, de- definitely the best time I've seen him, and I've, I think that might have been six or seven times I've seen him now. But they were just absolutely brilliant. They brought out a whole lot of energy in me. I didn't know I actually had in me like that day. I was uh, I was pretty steaming, and uh, no, they just put on an absolutely brilliant show. Um, it, some of their new songs were just brilliant to hear live as well. So yeah, re- really, really, really rated them. Um, do do either of you guys remember what the the after party was? It was a, that night. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the chugger boom, I think. Boom, right? I think uh, Pete and I disagree oh, on that. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like chugger boom are kind of like a comedy metalcore band, and I mean they're not the best band in the world, but I thought they were quite fun, um, and they were definitely like something different. Um, they were they were they were well placed in the after party, I thought, because they were, they kind of um, brought a bit of like comic relief at the end of the uh, at the end of the day. So I enjoyed them. That's absolutely legitimate. I I just feel that, um, I think my my piece is that I think they could develop the after parties a bit more, move it back into the second stage, hold it in there so uh, the sounds better. Can use a bit bigger speakers. Don't have to use the whole whack uh, for the evening. But um, just upgrade the acts. You can get a lot of good, uh, like metal dance crossovers. And uh, Chugga Boom was sort of like a crossover between Insane Clown Posse and uh, metal. And uh, <laughs> I couldn't quite deal with it. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I managed to catch them. Uh, but does not exactly sound like my cup of tea. Um, but I mean, <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure it was a great time. And I'm sure if I drank enough, I'd probably be very much into it. 
Uh, but before we move on to Sunday, I just want to give uh, one last shout out to a band that played on Saturday, the Parallax Method. I don't know if you guys managed to check them out. I just, I saw their name here on my notes. I almost forgot about them. Uh, Prague instrumental three piece, uh, very impressive playing style, very noodly, very expressive. Uh, I was a big fan. Uh, so I got to remind myself to check out more of their stuff. So shout out to the Parallax Method as well. Uh, you guys were awesome. Yeah, I, I have to check that out. I didn't, didn't hear about them, but yeah. Yeah, they were they were like the openers on the uh, Carillion guitar stage, I uh, I think. Uh, all right, so Sunday, uh, once again, another big day, but I think a little bit slower in terms of, of press stuff for us, so we had a little bit more time to enjoy things. Uh, so who were the highlights of Sunday? God, you could go through the whole day with this one. I mean, um, for the most part, actually, I didn't really go to a second stage. It was all uh, main stage for me pretty much all day. Um, so highlights for me, I- I've got to give a shout out to uh, Invocation. It was obviously their first show back. Um, I played an absolute monstrous set. Just really, really great to hear the album. Um, I'm not sure if they played it in full, but it was a hell of a long set and a hell of a heavy set as well. Um, I was really, really impressed by them. Um, band was just absolutely on point. Um, so yeah, really, really rated them. Um, probably my biggest surprise was uh, Frontier. I, I, I heard them and I just thought, oh, it's a lot of noise. Don't really get it. Not going to bother with it. And uh, went and checked him out, and fuck me, like uh, it felt like my skin was getting ripped off my face at points. It was just <laughs> like you know that scene in Indiana Jones. Oh, um, when, when every, all the all faces that... are melting off. Yeah, yeah, th- exactly that. That that sums up Frontier for me. Like just honestly, if you had a kidney stone, it would have decimated it in a second. It was absolutely <laughs> amazing. So bassy, so heavy. Yeah, really, really. Really, really, really enjoyed them, um, and gotten into only their records since. Would, oh, yeah, I'm. Ahead, a, I'm, I'm a, oh, I, no, I was no, you, only only in metal would it will tear your skin off. Be like a recommendation of a band. <laughs> <laughs> now, see, the thing is, I I was a really big fan of Orange Mathematics. I really you know in, enjoyed Frontier that way, but I I find personally it 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 didn't feel the same live. I, I don't know if if that was just me, but I, I remember just kind of standing there and being like, I'm not really feeling it as much as I, you know, as I am when I'm listening to this record at, you know, at home or, you know, on the run. It just, to me, it didn't translate as well live. I mean, it was still really good. Uh, it was kind of neat to hear those filthy, sick guitar noises live. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know. To me, it just didn't translate I, as well. To be fair, it was their debut and uh, that that's always a hard gig to put on in front of that many people you gotta you gotta uh give them benefit of the doubt maybe <laughs> fair enough fair enough how how about you josh any yeah, highlights I, from I sunday? sunday quite a lot actually um yeah uh i think um i was really looking forward to shields but i don't know i i've seen them live twice and i always feel like they don't quite stack up to what um to how they sound on record I don't know what it is about them. It's just like I always feel like live. They they're lacking the quite the, maybe the wall of noise sort of feel they kind of have with some of their songs on um on their EP and album and stuff. Oh, their EP, sorry. Um, other than that, uh, obviously textures were really really good, like really heavy, really like bit of prog, bit of groove, just everything you want in a band of tech fest really. And earlier on the Sunday on the second stage, um, band uh, called Pravatas. Um, I should. Disclose fully. I'm uh, quite good friends with uh, guitarists, so I'm maybe a bit biased. But um, they are pretty cool. They're like, um, uh, like pretty te- like really heavy, like really technical death metal um, with some uh, yeah, just technical death metal. Basically, they just released a new um, uh, single a while ago. They're pretty interesting, and I guess novelists as well were really. I mean, novelists are novelists. They're awesome, regardless. Lots of melody, lots of groove, also pretty heavy. I kind of. I get kind of a um, a Dai Thunder concept vibe to them a little bit, uh, just in the way they kind of fuse the like really heavy guitars and the all the kind of heaviness and the melody kind of combined together. But yeah, no, that was sort of. I thought Sunday was a really solid day. Actually, it had a really good set of bands. So yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, I had uh, I Vitalism got shifted to uh, the after parties, so maybe we'll talk about that then. Um, I also saw uh, Ghost oh, yeah, Iris. Cool. I don't know if you guys caught them. 
I didn't catch them now. Yeah, I, I was um, I, 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 I'm not a massive fan of the uh, clean vocals they've got on them. Um, and I probably would like to see them live instrumentally if, if possible, but really, really good album they put out early in the year. So, uh, yeah, that was all right as well. I'd say. I think for me, the highlight of Sunday was definitely Haken. Um, mm, man, what a band. so, so awesome. Uh, of course they had just put out affinity. So they were playing a couple tracks from that. And, uh, I, I, I think personally, I kind of lost it with there was that part, like just before 1985 started and like Ross, the vocalist came out in like those Kanye West, n- like neon light green <laughs> shades. That's, that was so, that was so cool. I, I thought that was really cool. And of course hearing songs like the <laughs> cockroach King and, you know, just, just seeing them live for the first insane. time. Cause I'm, I'm a, I'm a pretty big Haken fan. Uh, so that was, that was really awesome. Uh, I was late for the novelist set. Um, and really the only song I like or know by them is Gravity. <laughs> and apparently I, mi- I, I missed it. So <laughs> I think I was like standing right beside you, Josh. And I was like, Oh, did they play Gravity? And you were like, Yeah. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> yeah. See you later. Uh, so sorry, novelists. Uh, I really like Gravity though. I'm just, I'm just bummed I missed it. Um, <laughs> I also had a couple interviews that day. Um, I interviewed, uh, oh, man, I hopefully I can get this name right. Uh, I, I, it tar, tardive dis, dyskinesia dis, I think it's dyskinesia tardive dyskinesia so. uh, they came all the way from Greece uh, really cool interview really good guys uh, I think I caught the band as well and they were they were really good um, also had an interview with Paul Wagner of Between the Buried and Me and that was a great that was a great interview uh, as well as a wonderfully candid interview with uh, the guitar players of Hagen just outside that like pancake food truck or whatever it was it it was (laughs) Uh, (laughs) our interview was 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 super candid it was really hilarious uh but unfortunately that phone that had gotten wet it came back to life i recorded some interviews with it died once again so unfortunately we've lost the interviews with tardive dyskinesia with paul wagner of between the berry to me and that that haken one so i'm super super upset about that um, but I'll have them in my heart, in my mind, for always. Um, Absolute wounder. <laughs> but uh, but of course, between the buried and me, they were the Sunday headliners, and they are amazing as always. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean that that top three. I mean, starting at Hack, and that was the best time I've been lucky enough to see them three times in the last year, and uh, they blow my socks off every time. But this time was definitely the best. So I'd actually say. Back in November, Hacken and Between the Buried and Me did a tour around uh, the UK. And um, Hacken on that tour, for me, were actually better than Between the Buried and Me. They just sounded a lot tighter. Um, I guess they might have been jet lagged Between the Buried and Me again. Who knows? I I can't really tell nowadays um, how soon bands get in before they start touring. But um, Textures as well. I was lucky enough to interview uh, Textures earlier in the day. And uh, wow, I mean, Josh, I, I know you really enjoyed them as well. And the sounds, the, the set list, it was just immaculate for yeah, textures, they were really, I thought. Really solid uh, on Sunday. Like, easy one of the best gigs of the weekend. Absolutely. I just thought, um, oh, God, uh, it's just, yeah, they, they changed their whole kit. So they're using uh, axes. I think it was axes. It might, might be completely wrong here. But uh, everything was programmed in, and the sound was really crunchy. The uh, vocalist even has just really upped his game since I last saw them. Um, I believe that was like three years ago now. So uh, it's been quite a bit of time since the last saw Textures, but they've come back and uh, really made an impression on me. Now, this is going to be a bit of an embarrassing confession, but uh, I've never really heard much of Textures before. I know uh, a, lot, a lot of people tell me that they're one of, like, you know, the forefathers of this sort of, you know, progressive... It's like saying you have a list of fell silent and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, also another embarrassing confession. I haven't listened to much of fell uh, silent. I either. admit. N- uh, uh, <laughs> i, I, I got to say, I'm one of this one. I just played one of the songs. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're just bearing it all out here. It jets we're, confession. We're, we're a sack for not the I think I don't think I can. Off. I don't think I can technically write for the website anymore <laughs> after admitting I haven't listened to textures or fell silent. Uh, but back to what you were saying, Pete. About it's it's like I I don't get 
Oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I, I was about to say I don't get my sugar, so uh, yeah, it's like, the same what? sort of thing, isn't it? <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, but, but back to what you're saying about Between the Buried and Me and possibly being being tired. I I think that th- that band is one of the hardest working and hardest touring bands around yeah. right now. They're yeah. on like the th- fourth or fifth, you know, um, supporting tour for Coma Ecliptic and that album came oh, out a year and a half ago it's ridiculous Absolutely crazy how much it's crazy tour. how much they, and they, they don't just do they don't just do like a 10 day tour they do like a, a 30 day tour and spend uh, a month and a half out on the road and um I, yeah i i was saying uh, earlier that the uh the last gig i saw them out there probably tired but this one was probably the best okay. time i've seen them again as well um <laughs> I, i'm not sure if it's just a stage giving these bands such good sound but they sounded again so heavy um the set list was just absolutely wonderful just bringing things from alaska all the way through to the latest album cover clipped it like you said and uh it was really really great to hear i would have liked to seen uh, would have liked to see a bit more of coma clipped it maybe and it's a shame they missed out the great misdirect because i absolutely fucking love that album and it's a shame they've sort of shooed it off to the side for the last few album tours i think I've they've seen. got so much material it's difficult for them to cover all of it like they they've got like <laughs> like five albums I think. it's like a lot of stuff to pack into an hour set yeah absolutely yeah so sunday was a pretty in- incredible way to uh you know cap off the weekend and once again apologies to the bands that i interviewed uh when our interviews are not going to be published i'm super (laughs) sorry about that uh we'll just have to do it again sometime and i will be much better prepared i promise uh now i think it was the after party of sunday uh it was I think Techioki was oh, yeah. a part of it where uh, fans and band members alike could get up and and sing songs like actual karaoke. Only about four people did it, though, uh, from what I remember. It was it was pretty short. I think it was cut a bit short because you had uh, Vitalism and the Green River Burial. Their flight landed quite late from um, their European tour. So they had to play in the, uh, like, pretty much straight after between the Buried and Me. You got to sit down, refill your drink, and jump over to the uh, the uh, hands on printing stage. And um, uh, I mean, f- did you guys catch Vitalism? I can't remember if you have or not. I didn't. I, uh, I didn't catch them, no. Oh, uh, th- you, I'd probably say they're up there in the top two or three instrumental bands of the weekend and really blew me away really really tight um like picking sweeping it was just really great to see and especially if they were tired been jet lagged and stuff like that it's a really great show and uh, for me that was a great way to round off the weekend uh, and also shout out to vitalism i thought i was coming a long way from canada but uh these guys came all the way from brazil i think oh, wow. it was yeah yeah, they, they, they flew quite a while, so shout out, shout out to Vitalism. That's some commitment flying all the way from... I hope it's Brazil. I'm just double-checking now because I don't want to be that, it that, is Brazil, that journalist you got, you got who gets his, right. gets his facts wrong. Uh, Brazil, yeah, so that's that was super cool. Yeah, they're from Brazil. All right. I'm not that journalist who's just, who's just spouting out terrible facts. <laughs> um, okay, well, so is there anything else we want to we wanna add about the weekend? Um, I just got to say, like, it, it just felt um, like perfectly organized this year. It was just really nice. The toilets are pretty much always clean. Um, it was well laid out. The only thing that was missing this year was the real ale stand. I mean, that was a big disappointment, having to go and get some uh, Fosters or Peroni or whatever they were serving at the bar. Um, we could have done with some real beer. But, hey, <laughs> as far as things go, it was a really, really great weekend. Yeah, no, like, just... Awesome, awesome weekend. Like, really went from strength to strength. There weren't really any kind of... I mean, there weren't really any big downsides to the festival. It was really, like, small community feel, but it had, like, big bands headlining it. Like, it's best of both worlds, really. Yeah, I don't think I can think of really anything negative. Like, the weekend was just incredible. I I can't wait to go back, <laughs> honestly. I can't wait to see what it's going to be like in, you know, in the 6th, the 7th, the eighth ninth tenth anniversary of tech fest like i think yeah. it can only get bigger and better from here exactly that yeah speaking to simon he's always looking for ways to increase like the capacity increase like 
the, the, the draw of the bands coming in uh, and you get somebody like animals as leaders play and you go to somebody like between the buried and me and say i've got animals playing do you want to jump in on this they're always going to say yes it's just uh it's making sure you've got those solid building blocks of, of something which Techfest has struggled with is bands who commit. I mean, you had the contortionist drop out um, two years back, or was it last year? I can't really remember. But that was a real shame. Um, and I think Simon sort of learned from that. He's booked bands which he trusts, which he knows, which the UK sees, uh, scene knows and trusts as well. And uh, I'm, I'm sure next year, we're going to see bigger bands. I think maybe even the return of Sif. I can see them coming back with their new vocalist from um, Elias's. Um, and uh, you never know. Maybe you'll get Meshuggah back. But ho I'm hoping for bands like the Jata, Uneven Structure, to come back to the scene in the UK and start playing the festival yeah, again as well. It's only going to get bigger, really. Like It's only get, going to get bigger and better, and the scene's going to grow and grow and grow and grow. And um, I hope like, in a few years it will be able to chat or maybe not challenging the bigger festivals but certainly as important and as significant as the bigger festivals in terms of the scene yeah it was just overall just just an incredible experience so of course shout out to all the amazing bands that we saw we're, we're privileged to see uh the bands that we were able to talk and interview with and shout out just to everyone else that we met while we were there uh thank you for helping contribute to that you know that real community feeling of the weekend um yeah it's, it's great to hear you have people who aren't even uh like uh working the weekend who will be like making placards making um signs posters doing the like marketing for the uh for the website um it's just absolutely fantastic it's a real like group effort and uh, yeah, big shout out to everybody who's made this happen year after year. It's uh, great to be a part of that this community, and uh, I'm really looking forward to coming back every single year. And even if I'm halfway around the globe, I'll be coming straight back for it every summer. Good to hear. Yeah, in in particular, thank you, Simon Garrett, and everyone else on the production team, and all the stewards, the people who volunteered their time. It you know it was just a well oiled machine. And I, I know I've, I'm, you know, repeating myself here, but just an incredible experience overall. Uh, so do you guys have anything else to add before we wrap up this podcast? Um, just get yeah, more of the same, same right? Super Early Run Festival, well done to everyone involved, and thank you so much for kind of producing one of the most unique and awesome festivals in the UK. Yeah, I guess um, something else you've got to watch out for is um, they normally hold uh, tech affiliation events um, where you get to see some of the bands that have played the festival, maybe a few more new ones as well you haven't yet seen. Um, they'll play a really long all day. Uh, that'll probably be close to Christmas, I believe. But we'll start hearing details of that soon enough, I'm sure. Um, it'll be really good to get everybody down again. You get to see old friends, maybe people even coming from abroad. you got all the... Uh, the uh, Scandinavian countries. I know a lot of people come over from there. So big shout out to everybody who travels over and yourself, Dana, for uh, making the effort, committing the miles and uh, getting over. It's, uh, it's brilliant to have a, an international community now. Uh, whereas when we first started out, we were just hanging out in a car park outside of Town Hall Centre. It was purely British practically. But now it's uh, gone to a full international scene and it's just fantastic to see people coming together under one banner, which is uh, playing distorted music which is just fucking awesome really all right well thank you josh and pete for joining me on this podcast and of course helping me the weekend to you know to cover to cover the festival like we said earlier in the in this podcast this was more or less your your kind yeah. of first uh big thing for the yeah, website so you both performed admirably so thank you once again for your time and your effort and joining me here today and yeah, thanks for the opportunity it's, uh quality to be on this team and uh look forward to uh covering some more stuff for it gents hopefully got um might be covering the monument show next week um down in guildford all right well we have been josh redmond pete overall and dana jones and thank you guys for listening to it gents first podcast